What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out. Hide and Cheek from Big G Creative. This is for two to four players, ages six plus. Take you about 20 minutes to play. And in Hide and Cheek, everybody's going to strap on one of these cool little chipmunk masks right here. And then on your turn, you are going to take three of these little nuts right here, and you're going to put them under the four tree trunks that you have right here. It's kind of like a little bit of a shell game. We're going to mix them up, and you can put all three under one or you can put one under three of them and then everyone's going to go around the table and they're going to pick up one of the tree trunks and take the shells underneath it so you're trying to hide them from the other players because if it gets all the way back around to you then you get whatever uh nuts weren't found it's a very light simple game there's also the oh so yucky green nuts which will make the round slightly different because then there's only one nut that's being hidden and if someone finds it then they have to give you three of their good nuts but it's a very light simple game but this is the review so one of my final thoughts let's go over the pros let's go over the cons first on the con side the game's not gonna be for everybody for a variety of reasons this is a very very young children's game i would say probably around the age of 9, 10, they're going to start out growing this sort of game, especially if you're a little bit more into the hobby game market and you're playing things from Haba and Blue Orange Games and other different companies like that. It's a very light game, and it doesn't really have room to grow. Now, that being said, I can't, I still played it with my 4-year-old, uh, and he enjoyed a good deal, but my 8-year-old, while enjoying it, I, I feel like he's definitely going to outgrow it relatively fast. Um, the masks aren't the most comfortable. That's the other thing that I want to mention, too. The, the masks aren't the most comfortable, and they're kind of difficult to use, like, especially, uh, me and my wife had some issues, but what you do is you actually put the, the nuts inside of your face pouch like this, and it's not as easy as you would like it to be. I mean, it's really cool gameplay-wise, but there, also you have to take them out sometimes. Like, this one is really hard to get in there, and that's for an adult. So imagine you're playing this as a four- or five-year-old, and it's just kind of, oh, that's, that thing's it's right up in my eyes. <laughs> I've actually played with a four or five year old. They're having issues doing that. So that is something that you do need to know. But I feel like as they get more stretched out, that will be less of an issue. We've only played it twice now. Uh, but they're not the most comfortable. And actually, uh, we just ended up playing, uh, put, you putting the nuts on the table and just wearing the face mask because the kids did like the face mask. <sighs> Any other cons that I have with it? No, moving on to the pros. I like Hide and Cheek. I think it's a good family slash very young children's game. And I do think that once kids know how to play this, they can teach it to other kids, which is what I consider to be a children's game when there needs to be no adult pr present. I would say if you have kids between the age of five to eight years old, they could definitely play this with no adults needed at all, which is nice. Um, it's fun. It's random. You know, it's not one of those ones where you can do anything intentionally bad to someone, like because it's just you hide the things and then you kind of see what happens. And that's both good and bad. It means that this game is not going to have the kind of legs that other children's games are going to have. Uh, and, and I'll post a link up here if you want to know some of my all-time favorite children's games, games that I absolutely adore. Uh, this one, unfortunately, I'm just going to put in the good category. The first game, I thought it was okay. I played it the second time. My four-year-old really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to put it into the good category, and I think it's a good family slash children game. So that is Hide and Cheek from Big G Creative. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. Be sure to check this one out. Also, if your kids like squirrels, this obviously gets that big bonus point, and then I think it becomes a great game. Because I will be honest, uh, you know what? I am gonna get I'm gonna give it a 7.3. Just because I do actually really like these masks, and these masks are pretty cool. And the components are top notch. And so yeah, I am gonna bump that up. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. But there you go. That is Hide and Cheek from Big G Creative. It looks like it might be a cup of tea. Be sure to check that one out. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. I'm trying to reach 9,000 subscribers, celebrate my nine-year anniversary making YouTube content. And in the comments below, let me know. What's your most recent interaction with an animal? Um so aside from my dog, I'm not gonna count my dog. Uh I had I had this interaction with a bunny, and there was this bunny. And I was looking out the window. I walk in place because I try and get my steps every single day. So I'm walking in place. And I'm looking out my window. Really cold day. Really, really cold night, actually. Uh, and there's a bunny. And he sees me. And he's running in the middle of the road. And he just stops. He stops. And I'm just staring at this bunny. And this bunny is just staring. Like, not at me. Like, I know the bunny's looking at me. But he's doing the thing where it's like, oh, I'm not actually looking at you. Because he's just kind of looking over here. But he's like, uses his periffs. 
And like, I just stare at him and I stare at him. I'm walking in place. I'm just staring at him. And I'm just talking to my wife. I'm like, I'm color commentating the bunny. I'm like, why isn't this bunny going anywhere? And it's just like, as the minutes drag on, my wife is starting to get annoyed at this point. It's like, why are you still talking about the stupid bunny? I'm like, because the bunny hasn't moved. And I'm not exaggerating. It was probably about a two to three minute ordeal where the bunny sat in the middle of the road. I was waiting for the bunny to move. It was an epic stare down between me and the bunny and I would not lose. Then I took my eye off the ball just for, because I was really hoping that a car would come. Not to hit the bunny, but to make the bunny move. And then I would, I would, I would win that stare down. But, so what I decided to do is I decided to get it, to take it, bump it up a notch. You know, I don't, I don't resort to violence, but I do like to escalate things. That's just my go-to uh, defense mechanism, I guess. <laughs> but, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to stand out on my porch. So I go to my door, I open my door, and I'm ready. I'm like, all right, now there's no, there's no windows here. It's you and me. I can see you. You can touch me. And I go outside to stare at him on my porch. <sighs> Bunny ran off. Because I, I stopped staring at him. And he won. He knew he won. And he got out. And uh, that was my last interaction with an animal. And, and I got to tell you, that's not like a regular story. I don't want to make it sound like I do this on a weekly basis. That's like, that's one of the most interesting animal stories I've ever had in my life. Well, I guess of local. Like, you know what I mean? Like squirrels and birds and weak stuff like that. This kind of went off the rails, but let me know in the comments below <laughs> what's your most recent interaction with an animal. And no, I'm not making any of that up. That actually all happened. My wife, she was kind of, she was like, why are you still talking about that stupid bunny? Uh, but let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.